Attention all, the story I am about to tell you is simply a fairy tale that took place in a land far, far away. The people in the story are neither real nor did any of these events allegedly occur. Let me tell you a story. A story about what a candle maker called Delma that lived on the outskirts of a castle for almost two years. And the way that candle maker left the village was not on good terms and not the way that they wanted. A chambermaid, let's call them Clitoria. They didn't like Dilma. Well, Clitoria liked Dilma at the start, but Dilma didn't like her so much. Clitoria always tried to be nice to Dilma, but he was not into it because Dilma is not that kind of guy that liked women like Clitoria. She was not for him. Clitoria rose through the chambermaid ranks to be crowned Princess Humpmany's personal aide. And now Dilma had to listen to her whenever the princess would travel or rest in her grand rooms. Well, Dilma was okay with that, as long as you asked him nicely. But let's be clear, he was not into her. However, other townspeople were very much into Clitoria because she invited a lot of her gentlemen friends over during the times of the Black Plague. Clitoria invited one, two, three gentlemen over and they stayed the night. Well, Clitoria had a great time. Not a problem at all, but it was upsetting to Dilma because he wanted to follow the rules. But as personal aid to the Princess Humpany, she could do whatever she wants. And now even worse, Dilma had to listen to her. Clitoria would scream and try and get Dilma upset, standing outside his caravan yelling at him about, close the doors. Dilma just thought she's just crazy, a frustrated woman. As time went on and restrictions were easing, Dilma was becoming uneasy about the whole situation. So he thought he would just go away because he doesn't want to live in a place with somebody that tries to ruin his life. Despite her trying and trying over and over again. Around this time, Dilma began correspondence with a maiden by the name of Lantana. She really loved Princess Humpmany and wanted so desperately to come and meet her. Whilst corresponding, Dilma and Lantana fell in love. But Clitoria could not handle their love. She had to try and ruin that too. When Dilma sought approval from the Princess Humpmany to meet Lantana, and it was granted, Dilma sent for her immediately, and she arrived by carriage, expecting a room to lay her weary head. Instead, Clitoria attacked Dilma first, then she attacked Lantana, in the worst way you could imagine. There was sadly no room available for Lantana in the 100-room castle that night. All of court was in attendance to witness the attack, as was Prince Dakel of Featherdicks, who had arrived earlier on his trusty steed. However, no one intervened during Clitoria's attack of Dilma and Lantana. Dilma, a proud man, took himself to the stairs of the Princess Humpany's chambers, crying, which showed how vulnerable he really was. Totori eventually found love with the princess's much younger and very handsome cousin, Duke Anwar of Bildertown. Dilma and Lantana eventually left the castle in search of one to call their own. But recently passing through town last week, Dilma wanted to contact the princess, but when he arrived, the princess was nowhere to be found. And he felt that while the court accepted him, they also wanted to get rid of him as soon as possible. This has hurt Dilma greatly, not seeing the princess as being the candle maker. He knows many of the castle's dark secrets. Dilma now wants to light up all the candles for all the village and followers to see. He is especially upset with the young courtier Phallic, who is now courting Princess Humpmany. Phallic once revealed to Dilma that he must lay with someone in bed every day. Anyone. It just must have a pulse. Dilma was really upset about this, as he's not that kind of guy. This whole sexual attraction to all the women and men in the castle is just ick. Phallic allegedly had bet the ladies in waiting chickpea and Clitoria, and even tried it with Poussey. It really blew Dilma's mind when he witnessed Clitoria and Phallic kissing outside, and then he saw them take the carriage out without any attendance. For those wondering, was Phallic's goal all along to bed the princess? That answer is a no. For you see, Phallic did not come for the princess hunt many, but came to bed Prince Decal of Feathertix. And one night, while court was at play, and none of the flaming candle Dilma so expertly crafted, Phallic mounted the prince, and they spent the evening reciting sweet nothings to each other. Now you may wonder why has Dilma, who has been gone from court for over two years, want to tell this fairy tale now? You see, his biggest problem is that he doesn't like the lies about it. He just wants everyone to say what is going on. But instead, they said, Dilma, your time as candle maker must now come to an end. And you need to forget 
all you have seen within the castle. But Dilma can't forget about it because Clitoria hurt him. But worse, she hurt Lantana, and there must be some way he can stop the wench. Now, children, as we close the chapter to this fairy tale, let this be a cautionary tale that bullying behaviour is unacceptable. And those that do like a sausage sizzle or two is perfectly acceptable when all parties consent.